Today, let's have a look at something a little bit different in terms of firewalls. This device I have in front of me today is a Checkpoint 1590, an SMB firewall primarily for those small business owners who need a device like this. This model specifically includes wireless and a 4G backup connection should your internet go. I'm hoping for this to be the first part of a mini series I'm putting together to give you a better understanding on how Checkpoint firewalls work and how they are configured. Checkpoint at the time of this recording currently have six different models across the Quantum Spark SMB range. These can be seen on the screen, the 1530, 1550, 1570 and the 1590. They've also added two additional models, the 1600 and 1800, and these can be serviced up to 500 users, depending on the size of your business, of course. Now, the numbers aren't set in stone. There are a number of varying factors. For example, the higher end models come with dual power supply. So if this is a hard requirement for you, you might find yourself going down that route. As I mentioned, the model I have in front of me is a 1590, an all-in-one solution for your business, or even at home if this is something you want. It has a built-in firewall, it can broadcast a wireless signal and have a 4G failover module in it. So let's open it up and have a look at what comes inside and look at the specification itself. Relatively small size box, let's just go ahead and slice this open and go ahead and open this up. As you'd expect with any device, very neatly packed. We'll just pop this to one side, we'll come back to this in a second. Let's continue and have a look at what comes inside the box. So you have some instructions, some mounting options, a SIM card installation guide, what looks like a quick start guide. Under here, this is where you have all the accessories. So we have a power adapter. We have the aerials. So it actually tells you on there already, this is the LTE antenna. And I'm probably gonna assume this is the Wi-Fi one. Yep. So dipole antenna Wi-Fi, and this is probably another LTE. So you have these right here. You have some mounting screws, so wall mount kit. These come inside it as well. A USB to USB-C adapter. This is to plug into the console port, which we'll have a look at in a second. It also comes with a ethernet cable, so network cable here, it doesn't say what category it is, I'm gonna assume that it's CAT6, but anyway. Uh, SIM card pin, so just like you've seen in most devices now, um, you have a pin to remove the SIM card. And finally, the power adapter, so that comes inside here as well. That's it inside the box, so let's move the box aside and let's start by looking at the device itself. So fairly light and fairly light device. There isn't probably too much weight I would have expected on here, but let's start at the back. So you have your Wi-Fi antenna, Wi-Fi antenna on the two sides here. I'm just gonna go across before we start going through the ports. Then we have two here. One is labeled as Wi-Fi and the other as LTE. So it quite easily differentiates between the two so you know where to plug them in. So it's all pre-labeled. On this side, you have a SIM card slot, which has a SIM card removal tool, but it seems like you need a screwdriver to undo this slot. Uh, I guess that's probably from a protection perspective. And yeah, I think that's it in terms of the sides. So if we have a quick look at the back, we have a reset pin. We have a factory default reset, I would assume is this one. Uh, we have eight one gig uh, ethernet ports on here for your LAN. We have a DMZ functionality, so you have uh, an ethernet where you can set up a, D a demilitarized zone and you have a WAN connection. So this is currently only one gigabit. There are the models higher in the range which come with a 2.5 gigabit slot. So depending on how fast your internet is at the moment, these models only come with one gig. You have a USB 3 and you have a console port. And right at the bottom in the corner here, you have a screw on power. As I mentioned earlier about the Wi-Fi, there is 2.4 and 5 gigahertz in this. There's no Wi-Fi 6, it is only AC. In terms of throughput for this device, uh, if you have the next-gen firewall and IPS enabled, you get about 1300 megabits per second. And if you have the threat prevention enabled, you get around about 660 megabits per second. Now, I haven't put these to the test, but these come from the manufacturer directly. So what I'm gonna do now is let's get this set up 
and let's get it plugged in onto the network so we can run through the interface. To get this set up, you're gonna need the power adapter. So you're gonna need these two right here and get these plugged in. You're gonna need your devices for LTE and uh, your Wi-Fi adapter, your Wi-Fi antennas. And if you're gonna hardwire in, you're probably gonna need your ethernet cable as well. Right, now that this is all plugged in and set up, I'm gonna use my ethernet cable to go ahead and plug this into my computer and let's see how we get this set up and have a quick look at the overall interface. If you're happy with some of the bits that I've shown you so far or you wanna see more on the Checkpoint Firewall, let me know down in the comments below and I'll be happy to put something together for you. The appliance is now connected and we've gone ahead and plugged it in. The IP address of it is just here. Type it in 192.168.1.1 and you will go straight to the checkpoint configuration. Checkpoint themselves do have a zero touch facility so you can deploy your checkpoint firewalls if you're doing this obviously across multiple businesses. Uh, you could do this but you have a zero touch setting but we'll run through the first time configuration and we'll see how it goes. So we click next. It's giving you an admin username and password. So I'm just gonna type in a password. It says select your country. So I'm in the United Kingdom. And we'll just untick this for now. Click next. We can go ahead and set the date and time for the appliance or we can use an NTP server, whichever you wish. I'm just gonna set it manually for now. And we click next. Appliance name. So I'm just gonna type in home gateway. Domain name, if you have one, you can pop that in there, but it's not mandatory. Local management or central management. So two different options you can choose here. If you're managing multiple devices, obviously central management is gonna be one of the key ones for you, but this is just a single device on a single network. So it's local management. Now it's saying for the internet, how do you wanna connect this? Uh, do you wanna use DHCP or do you wanna have a static IP? However you do it, I have DHCP, which is just plugged into my existing network. There you go, 10 dot, sorry. 10.1.1.86 is uh, my address because I've plugged it into my existing network just to give me a WAN connection. Click next. Now it's saying what do you want your settings to be across your network. So I'm just going to change this to 172.16.1.1. Uh, and then it gives you a DHCP range and do you want to exclude any? I'm just going to exclude 172.16.5.1. One to one seven two dot one six dot five dot ten. So I'm going to exclude the first ten IP addresses anyway. And um, we click next. Now we want to configure our wireless network. So we're going to do checkpoint checkpoint Wi-Fi is what we're going to call it. And password is going to be fairly simple just for the sake of this demonstration. You can choose what radio band you want to use. So it's 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. I'll have a look at this a little bit further later to see if there are any more configurations we can make on this. So from here, it says you can set where you want admin access to come from. So either from the LAN, a trusted wireless, a VPN, or if you want to set it out to the internet, you can set it out to the internet. Um, you can restrict IP addresses. So if you only want it to come from a specific IP address, uh, say the administrator's uh, desktop, then that's where you would access it from. I'm just gonna click any IP address for now, click next, and it's gonna go ahead and activate this. So we'll just let that finish just now. So this has the licenses already on it. So it's telling me what do I wanna activate? I'm gonna wanna activate the firewall, appliance and URL filtering, user awareness, remote VPN, site to site VPN, IPS, AV, anti-bot, threat emulation, and anti-spam. So let's go ahead and activate it all and let's let that finish up. So the appliance itself has reloaded, which is good, and we're logged into the system. It's showing how long it's been up for. You can see the internet's connected. We have the 2.4 gigahertz wireless radio, and we haven't enabled the five, so the five is still turned off at this point. We have notifications down here, Watchtower mobile app. Now this is something I'll go through on a different video as part of a multi-series just to show you a little bit more about it. And further down, we have the network activity to show you what's been going on. Now, because I've just plugged this in, there's not too much data in here anyway. Within this, within this there is hundreds and hundreds of settings that we can go through. But the whole objective of this video is just to go through and give you a quick understanding and look at what the checkpoint firewall looks like. So just going through the settings at the top, you've got the home dashboard, which goes through everything on here. So the overview, monitoring, then we move into device 
which tells you all about the devices. So you've got the network, you can look at the system and change settings there. You've got certificates and any advanced in terms of high availability if you decide to cluster these devices. And just to, on that note, yes, you can set up two as a high availability pair. So if one goes down, the other one takes over. Maybe one for another video. You have access policies. So this is where you would set up all your firewalls, your QoS, user awareness, etc., etc. You have threat prevention. So again, you would set everything up in here in terms of what you need, in terms of exceptions, infection devices, your protection settings, and your anti-spam as well. You then have VPN settings. So you can go into here and you can choose, do you want to set up remote access, SSL VPN, Windows client. So everything's all in for single user. And then you have the site to site option as well and certificates again. You then have user and objects. So if you want to update anything here in terms of the users that you've got set up or any administrators, if you want some more admins or even configure a radius server, you can do that in here. And then finally, you have the logs and monitoring. So you have the security logs. If I just go to this one at the top here, you can see that there's traffic already being dropped from the firewall so it is doing its job of what you would expect it to do just down below here you can see there's updates pending so i'm just going to click on that and you can see what updates are pending so you can go to uh, schedule the updates we click on that and then we want it daily at 1 a.m so this will do it automatically at 1 a.m so this is all i really wanted to go through today to give you a quick understanding and overview of what the checkpoint firewall looks like and the some of the settings that are inside it now, if there's something specific you want to see or something you want to see me set up or configure, like I said, I'm, I'm looking to put together a mini series. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see and I'll see if I can put something together. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.